So we're told that f of x is equal to x over one minus cosine of x minus two. And, and they ask us to select the correct description of the one-sided limits of f at x equals two. And we see that right at x equals two, if we try to evaluate f of two, we get two over one minus cosine of two minus two, which is the same thing as cosine of zero. And cosine of zero is just one. And so one minus one is zero. And so the function is not defined at x equals two. And that's why it might be interesting to find the limit as x approaches two, and especially the one-sided limits. And if the one-sided limits, well, well, I'll just leave it at that. So let, let's, let's try to approach this. And there's, there's actually a couple of ways you could do it. There's one way you could do this without a calculator by just inspecting what's going on here and thinking about the properties of the cosine function. And if that inspires you, pause the video and work it out. And I will do that at the end of this video. The other way, if you have a calculator, is to do it with to is to do it with a little bit of a table like we've done in other example problems. So if we think about x approaching two from the positive direction, well then we can make a little table here where you have x and then you have f of x. And so if we're approaching two from values greater than two, uh, you could have 2.1 2.01. Now, the reason why I said calculators, these aren't trivial to evaluate because this would be what 2.1 over 1 minus cosine of 2.1 minus 2 is 0 0.1. I do not know what cosine of 0.1 is without a calculator. I do know that cosine of 0 is 1. So this is very, very close to 1 without getting to 1. And it's going to be less than 1. Cosine is never going to be greater than 1. The cosine function is bounded between negative 1 is less than cosine of x. I'll just write the x there. I don't need the parentheses which is less than one. The cosine, uh, the, the cosine function just oscillates between these two values. So this, this thing is going to be approaching one, but it's going to be less than one. It definitely cannot be greater than one. And that's actually a good hint for how you can just explore the structure here. And then you could say, all right, 2.01, well that's going to be 2.01 over one minus cosine of zero. 0.01, and this is going to be even closer to one without being one. So this could, you know, this is, but it's going to be less than one. No matter what, cosine of anything is going to be less than, it's going to be between negative one and one, and it could even be including those things. But as we approach, as we approach two, this thing is going to approach, it's going to approach one, I guess you could say approach one from below. And so you can start to make some intuitions here. If it's approaching one from below, uh, this thing over here, this whole expression, is going to be positive. And as we approach x equals two, well the numerator is positive, it's approaching two. The denominator is positive. So this whole thing has to be approaching a positive value or it could become unbounded in the positive direction. As we'll see, this is unbounded because this thing is even closer to one than this thing. And you would see that if you have a calculator. But needless to say, this is going to be unbounded in the positive direction. So we're going to be going towards positive infinity. So these two choices have that. And we can make the exact same argument as we go, as we approach x in the negative or from below. As we approach two from below, I should say. So that's x and that is f of x. And once again, I don't have a calculator in front of me. You could evaluate these things with a, at a calculator and it'll become very clear that these are positive. And as we get closer to two, they become even larger and larger positive values. And the same thing would happen if you did 1.9 and 1.9 and if you did and if you did 1.99. Because here you'd be 1.9 over 1 minus cosine. Now here you'd have 1.9 minus two, so this would be negative 0.1. Let me scroll over a little bit. This second one would be 1.99 over one minus cosine of negative 0.01, 0 0.01. And cosine of negative 0.1 is the same thing as cosine of 0 0.1. Cosine of negative 0.1 0, 1 is the same thing as cosine of 0 0.01. So these two things, this is going to be equivalent to that, that is going to be equivalent to that. And once again, we're going to be approaching positive infinity. 
So the only choice where all of that is true is this first one. Would we approach, would we approach two from the right hand side or the left hand side? We are approaching positive infinity. Now the other way you could have deduced that is say, okay, as we approach two, the numerator is going to be positive because two is positive, and then over here. As you approach two, cosine of anything can never be greater than one. It's going to approach one, but be less than one. So if this is less than one, as x approaches two, it becomes one when x is equal to two. Well then this right over here, one minus something less than one, is going to be positive. So you have a positive divided by positive, so you're definitely going to get positive values as you approach two. And we know, or, and they've already told us that these are going to be unbounded based on the choices, so you would, you would also pick that. But you should also feel good about it, that the closer that we get to two, the closer that this value right over here gets to uh, zero, and the closer that this value gets to zero, the closer we get to one, the closer we get to one, the smaller the denominator gets, and then you divide by smaller and smaller denominators, you're going to become unbounded towards infinity, which is exactly what we see in that first choice.